everybody, it's me in the spacesuit, John Schneider, and we're headed back to Earth for this week's episode to get a lay of the land in New Jersey Bayshore country. So fasten your seatbelts for our re-entry as we set the controls for good old New Jersey. Okay, here we are, coming in sideways, but we're going to be going straight down to the area we want to explore, Jersey Bayshore country. Let's access our data files on New Jersey. And by the way, can you name the easternmost point in all of New Jersey? Well, there's a close first and second place. The easternmost point in New Jersey is a town called Alpine on the Hudson River in Bergen County. The second easternmost town in New Jersey is Monmouth Beach, located in Monmouth County. Okay, let's zero in on Monmouth County which was established in 1683, and Earth historians aren't really sure how it got its name, but some suggest it could have been named uh, after uh, Monmouthshire in Wales, Great Britain, or named for James Scott, who was the first Duke of Monmouth and who had many allies among the East Jersey leadership. Regardless of the name's origin, the first county government was established in 1714, and here's where you're going to find the Jersey Bay shore we want to explore right there and we're looking north toward the Navasink River now here we go here's our map showing the direction we're looking and we're looking north toward Raritan Bay and there's Sandy Hook over there and right across Raritan Bay is Staten Island which we're going to talk about later Atlantic Highlands is right over there and there's Keensburg and then Union Beach and Keyport. And Hazlitt, which is one of the most densely populated towns in our area, is right there. It's Homedale, Matawan and Aberdeen, they're kind of intertwined, and Middletown, the largest town in our area comprising 67,000 residents. And there is the Atlantic Ocean. And there's Highlands, Seabright, Rumson and Fairhaven and, and of course we're still over Red Bank and there is the Shrewsbury River which flows into Sandy Hook Bay and then into Raritan Bay and there's Monmouth Beach Long Branch is down there to the south and here we are looking south with the Jersey Shore along the ocean to our left. And do you see that lake over there shaped like a horseshoe? Well, that's actually Swimming River Reservoir, which feeds the Navasink River. And that road is the Garden State Parkway, and we're gonna talk about that later, as I said. And off to the right in the distance is the west end of Raritan Bay, where Perth Amboy is located. And here's Route 35 with Raritan Bay in the distance. So let's take a look at some maps, old maps first, very old in fact. Let's go back to 1570, which was about 80 years after Columbus sailed to America. For example, here's one of the first fairly accurate maps of the world ever created. And from this map, here's a close-up of America. And that's where New Jersey is located, see it? So once these maps became available, lots of explorers were anxious to come to our part of the world. And here's a map of New Jersey from 1706 when our state was divided into East New Jersey and West New Jersey. And here are a couple of maps showing how things have remained the same and also changed. Look at Conescock Point, which is to the right of Keyport and to the left or west of Union Beach. And uh, Union Beach wasn't really quite established yet, but Keyport was thriving in a well-established community. And look at Comfort Point, which is today called Kingsburg. And Leonardo was called Leonardville. Then there was a town called Granville with a lighthouse, which became Kingsburg, and another town called Holland on the border of Holmdale and Middletown. And that still exists today. I, I, I just love looking at these old maps. And here is another map. Can you see Sandy Hook? So much has changed in our area, mostly because of storms and the movement of water currents in the ocean, bays, and rivers. Sandy Hook today is a seven-mile, 1,800-acre barrier spit 
but it's fast expanding northward from littoral drift of sand, primarily from the beaches in Seabright and Long Branch. In other words, sand is coming up and piling on to Sandy Hook, and so its shape is changing. And it's being changed by the Shrewsbury and Navasink rivers as they flow into Raritan Bay. Take a look at this. So here on the left is a photograph of what Sandy Hook looks like today. And that red line indicates what, it, uh, uh, what erosion has done and uh, littoral drift has done to alter the shape of Sandy Hook over the years. On the right is an old photograph from the 1940s. And look how different they are. And even today, year over year, uh, there are lots of differences that can physically be seen. So here are a couple of photographs from today, uh, one on the left and one on the right, uh, taken by two different photographers at slightly different times. But basically, that's the shape that Sandy Hook is in today. Now let's go back to the mid-1700s. Take a look at this. Now can you see how the Navasink River goes right through uh, Seabright and Sandy Hook? Well, it does that a couple of times in its history. Now here's a, here's a, here's a decade or so later, and there are two places that the Navasink and the Shrewsbury River go directly out to the ocean uh, through Seabright and Sandy Hook. And here's uh, about 1810. Uh, you can see that those inlets have uh, closed up and the rivers of, and the tributary of Navasink tend to flow like they are today, although Sandy Hook is a little bit different shape than it, it, than it is today. And then again, about 1830, there's another break <laughs> in Sandy Hook and, uh, uh, and the river water can flow right out into the ocean directly. Isn't that strange? And again, uh, uh, a decade or so later, uh, it breaks through again. And, and then is when the formation of Plum Island, which used to be an island and is now not so much an island, begins to be formed. And then to 1848 and about 1850, uh, things change again. Everything closes up, but Plum Island is firmly established as an island. And then, believe it or not, <laughs> about 1896, uh, about when Fort Hancock uh, started being built, uh, there is a, another break in Sandy Hook, and the water flows uh, right out into the ocean once again. Isn't it crazy? And then for about 40 years, everything uh, kind of heals up again, and it looks a little like it does today, and, uh, and everything is stable for a while. So again, here's that uh, aerial photograph from uh, today on the left showing the red line where uh, it uh, corresponds to the photograph on the right. And if it wasn't for Sandy Hook, Towns like Highlands and Atlantic Highlands would be vulnerable to the wave action of the Atlantic Ocean. So look at this old map from 1776, and it really is worth taking some time for a close look. The section on the right of the screen is enlarged from the map on the left. Now do you see Sandy Hook? And, and look how the Shrewsbury River flows directly out to sea and Sandy Hook is connected to the mainland, just like we saw in the previous animation. Now look at the text, which reads, The Highlands of Neversink. Do you see it? Now the name Neversink was coined because ships would look back as they left our area, and the hills would take a long time to sink below the horizon. They would never sink below the horizon, get it? And so Neversink eventually transformed into Navasink, and that's the way it's pronounced. Navasink, not Navasink. Watch this. Now, I, I, I've got, I'm to, we're talking to the mayor of Middletown now. Mm -hmm. uh, Navasink is one of the villages, one of the towns right. of Middletown. And um, I used to call it Navasink. My family used to call it Navasink. But I talked to the local police and said, how do you pronounce it? They say Navasink, you say Navasink. Mm -hmm. How do you know it's right? I go by the locals. And if, <laughs> if, if there's a, a fifth generation person telling you it's pronounced a certain way, then that's the way it's pronounced. There you have it. And, and I know people pronounce it both ways. So let's go back to the hills of Neversink. 
as they were once called, and dig a little deeper, so to speak, into why these so-called hills even exist. And here is a more recent map on the right showing the topography of the area. And you can see all of the elevated areas in our region. But let's focus on the hills along the shoreline in Atlantic Highlands and Islands. And, and a report issued from the United States Geological Survey shown here. And here are the hills we're talking about. Highlands and Atlantic Highlands to our left, Sandy Hook and Raritan Bay straight ahead, and Sandy Hook, which can't be seen in this view, is to our right. And here's Mount Mitchell, which is a scenic overlook belonging to Monmouth County Park System. In fact, the most prominent landform in Monmouth County is an erosion-resistant ridge of glauconite and sand formations capped by tertiary ironstone conglomerate and yellow gravel. Boy, that's a mouthful. The Mount Pleasant Hills extend from Keyport to the hills of Atlantic Highlands, Highlands, and Middletown, and they face Sandy Hook Bay. And if you've watched some of our past programs, you already know that about 20,000 years ago, these hills were along the valley of the combined hudson Raritan rivers before glacial melt drowned the two rivers into an estuary about 6,000 years ago. So see, it was a river valley. There was a river. It wasn't Raritan Bay. And at that time, Mount Mitchell may have been as much as 600 feet above sea level instead of its present day 266 feet above sea level. So for the most part, these hills are largely unconsolidated marine sands with silt and clay from the late Cretaceous and early Tertiary Ages. That's about 65 million years ago. And so here's a cutaway showing us what's happening. Sandy Hook is on the right of the illustration. And if it wasn't for Sandy Hook, these slump blocks and the house on top of them would slide into the water. And that's exactly what happened before Sandy Hook became a barrier island and then a peninsula protecting the mainland from tidal currents and open ocean waves which eroded the bluffs centuries ago before Sandy Hook came into existence. Now here's a diagram showing the anatomy of a slump block which would occur frequently as waves undercut the bluffs. And since the early 70s, Slumping has kind of reactivated somewhat <laughs> as storms and hurricanes cause surges from the ocean which cross over Sandy Hook and the Shrewsbury River to attack the hills, to, to undercut the bluffs. In addition, uh, there are tremors from small earthquakes in our area which may have also contributed to slumping. So while water has played a huge part in why our area is so wonderful, it has also been a force which sometimes makes life challenging for the folks living near it when storms occur. So let's spend some time looking at the water which surrounds us. Five major rivers empty into Raritan Bay. They are the Navasink and Shrewsbury Rivers, which are in the southeast section of the bay near Sandy Hook. Then there's the Raritan River, which flows from the southwest section of the bay. There's the Hudson River, which makes its long journey from New York State, flows alongside of Manhattan, and eventually flows into Raritan Bay. And then there's Arthur Kill. And I guess there's a sixth source of water as well when the tide rises. It's the Atlantic Ocean. It's also the source of all the large passenger ships and freighters that come into our harbor and deliver whatever it is we need. And when freighters begin their voyage into our area, they enter something called the New York Bight. A strange name, I, I didn't understand it at first. And thank goodness on some maps, it's described as the New York, New Jersey Bight, which is far more geographically accurate. So this bight is an indentation underwater along the Atlantic coast of the United States, extending northeasterly from Cape May Inlet in New Jersey to Montauk Point at the eastern tip of Long Island. And interestingly, I think, is the fact that the coastal climate of the bight is temperate as a result of direct contact from the Gulf Stream along the coast of North America. Now, if you're a big ship, 
and you're bringing goods to New York or New Jersey, you come in through the bite. And of course, once you start approaching Sandy Hook on your left and Long Island on your right, you're going to use your instruments to get yourself into one of the major channels, such as the Ambrose Channel, which we've talked about. And what always amazes me is how close the ships are to the tip of Sandy Hook. Now, Raritan Bay, as you get into Raritan Bay, is named for the Raritans. Did you know that? They're, they're, no, they're not a community service group. They're a branch of the Lenape Indian tribe who lived in the vicinity of this bay for thousands of years prior to the arrival of Dutch colonists in the 17th century. The water depths in Raritan Bay average less than 20 feet deep. It's pretty muddy down there. And that's outside the dredged channels. The eastern part of the bay is somewhat deeper. Its uh, dredged channels in Raritan Bay and Sandy Hook range from 80 to 1400 feet wide and from about 10 to 35 feet deep. And something that a lot of people don't know about, because the government wants to keep it that way, and I don't blame them, is the two and a half mile Trident Pier, which juts out into Raritan and Sandy Hook Bays to resupply some of the Navy's military ships and submarines. Take a look. Now, once in a while, I take my small boat out to Sandy Hook Bay and look around a couple of times, I wandered a little too close to Naval Weapon Station Earl, the pier, where I was asked very quickly to leave the area. You cannot get close to this thing. It's known as Naval Weapon Station Earl. It's a United States Naval base. Now here's a satellite view with the north on the left. And the pier, the Naval Weapon Station Earl pier, is in the bay on the left and the military train depot is on the right in Colts Neck. Take a moment, take a look at that. Now do you see the photo of the pier on the left? Now the single pier expands into three piers or a trident and that's why I call it a trident pier. The stretch of track extends from Colts Neck which has a military base of more than 10,000 acres all the way to Leonardo consisting of about 700 acres along Raritan Bay. The entire length of the approximately 10 mile track has a restricted roadway along one side. And the track crosses over a number of public highway bridges during its trip. But a word of caution here, however, do not under any circumstances walk or drive along this military right of way. You will be chased away from this area. The entire complex in Leonardo and Colts Neck employs about 1,500 people and their Navy people and some private citizens which are consultants and contractors. The photo is where the train loads up supplies including ammunition which it takes to the end of the pier for loading onto the ships and submarines. Here's a photograph of the pier being built. Earl was built back in 1943 and, and the government needed an ammunition depot where it could deliver products and services and ammunitions to all the military ships. And it was out in the middle of the harbor so it wouldn't do damage to anybody if something were to happen, if a, a shell were to explode or something like that. It's a very interesting place, two and a half miles out into Raritan Bay. Amazing. You know, one thing I always find interesting about Raritan Bay is the fact that we only have to look north across the Raritan Bay to see the southernmost part of New York State, <laughs> Staten Island. But it's not just the land which is New York, it's roughly half the Raritan Bay. So from Keyport, at the western end of Raritan Bay, Staten Island appears to be a stone's throw away. In fact, the small boat will get us there in about five minutes. So let's leave Keyport Harbor and uh, take a quick look at what it looks like. And here it is, Staten Island. Look at that reddish sand. It's very similar to the golden sand found on the beaches of Keensburg. And there's also some elevation on Staten Island, just like we have. Here's an old map from 1887 showing the survey that was done on behalf of both states to determine 
who owns what part of the bay, you know, kind of roughly down the middle. And, and look how there are corollary hills in Staten Island, which are due north from our own hills. Toad Hill on Staten Island claims to be the highest point in the eastern seaboard, 402 feet above sea level. Our highest point is not Mount Mitchell, which is 266 feet, or the hill where the Twin Lights of Navasink is located. Nope. The highest point is Crawford Hill, upon which the theory of the universe was formulated. Seriously. On Crawford Hill in Holmdale, New Jersey, former site of Bell Laboratories, 380 plus feet above sea level, and you can see this horn antenna right here, was where Robert Wilson and Arno Penzias discovered the Big Bang Theory. Huge theory. It said the universe was created with one big giant explosion, a big bang. And ever since that time, all of us, the stars and the planets and matter, have been expanding outward. And in 1978, they were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. That's it. That's the spot. 380 plus feet above sea level. So let's take a look around. Here we are looking west. Right below us is uh, the horn antenna. And we're gonna look due north in just a minute. There's the bay way off there in Staten Island coming into view. Can you see it? And there, right down there to the right is the Garden State Parkway. You know them. Garden State Parkway, Route 35, Route 36. And some folks believe that the construction of the Garden State Parkway had a detrimental impact on our area because tourists could more easily take the parkway down to the Jersey Shore as opposed to jumping on Route 36 and headed towards Sandy Hook. I wish that dream highway were completely finished. But all that swell stretch that's already done between Cranford and Woodbridge, boy, what a difference. No stops and starts, no traffic signals, just smooth sailing all the way. And absolutely no great intersections. The crossroads are all overpassed or underpassed. relax and enjoy your driving in comfort and safety. Traffic comes off and on only at well-marked interchanges. Now parts of Monmouth County uh, that weren't along the coast have remained farmland for many centuries, but uh, it is transitioning to become more of a suburban area and that's been accelerated by uh, the Garden State Parkway at, when it was completed in 1954. Today, the Garden State Parkway is a 172-mile limited-access toll parkway. In fact, it's the longest highway in New Jersey, stretching the length of New Jersey from the New York state line at Montvale all the way down to Cape May. Now, what you may not know is its official designation, although it's not marked anywhere. The uh, Garden State Parkway is actually State Route 444. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can, you can, you, that's trivia for you when you go out and you can say, do you know what the Garden State Parkway really is called? It's State Route 444. And while historically it was meant to provide a quick and easy way for folks to get to beaches on a hot summer day, some say it didn't help us much here in our neck of the woods because it was built so far west of our location that it was easier for cars to make it down to Asbury Park and the boardwalk than to get off at exit 117 and fight traffic on Route 36. Well, thank goodness we have the beaches at Sandy Hook and Seabright and Long Branch, as, as well as many others nearby, to attract folks to our neck of the woods. We also have some great beaches on Raritan Bay, which tourists are beginning to discover because so much is being done to improve them. And some of our towns are also finding ways to make shopping an adventure. In fact, we're becoming known for our antiques. 
And slowly but surely, we're promoting the attributes of our area through social media and advertising, like all the great sunrises and sunsets we have. We're slowly but surely coming back to experience the thrill of the golden age of tourism. Like in 1870, when steamboats were bringing tourists from New York to the railroad piers of places like Atlantic Highlands, where they could connect with the New Jersey Southern Railroad and cross a so-called Scissors Bridge between Highlands and Sandy Hook and go to towns all the way down to Long Branch or up and over to Keyport. And a 2,000-foot-long pier was constructed at Cedar Street in Keyport, and steamboats traveled up Matawan Creek to piers and hotels before the creek was dammed at Lake Lefferts and the creek silted in. And today, not many boats go up the Matawan Creek, except maybe my small boat. The steamships and ferries brought people to such places as Keensburg Amusement Park and Highland Beach on Sandy Hook. The city of Kingsburg Ferry actually operated here until 1963. Today, the Sea Streak Ferry and the New York Waterway Ferry carry mostly commuters to New York City and back again by the end of the day. The train which ran along Raritan Bay is gone. Today, the New Jersey Bayshore, however, has been rebuilt on the foundation of the tradition of our past. And tourism is still an important part of our future. And towns throughout Jersey Bayshore country are rebuilding and redeveloping to prepare for our future. It's an exciting time for a great place to live, to work, and to play. And it's always fun to see it from high above. And sometimes it's fun to see it from really high above like I am right now. Well, folks, that's it for this episode. That's the lay of the land from my viewpoint. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know what I always say, right? If you see me out there, anywhere, on a bike, in a boat, walking along a sidewalk or trying to climb a hill, do tap me on the shoulder and introduce yourself because nothing is more important than meeting you. So long, everybody. Oh, and just for fun, I'm going to leave you with this video. I look at this map, I see something which makes me wonder. What do I see, you're wondering? I see the profile of a big bear holding the fish. Oh, no, I haven't been drinking. Now watch, because here is the eye of the bear. Now, do you see? You see? You see the two ears represented by Union Beach and Kingsburg? Those, those are the ears of the bear. And the mouth of the bear is the Navasink River. Highlands is the bear's nose, and Sandy Hook is a fish that the bear is holding. <laughs> Do you see it? And Red Bank, Fairhaven, and Rumson represent the bear's lower jaw. Okay, take a look at this. See it? Okay, now let me show you the fish he's holding in his paws. Yeah, I know it's a little silly, but it sure looks like a bear to me. And incidentally, bears are very rare in Monmouth County. Most of them are in the northern part of the state, and they're actually growing in population. But there have been a few sightings in Monmouth County over the years, but still very rarely.